Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Detroit's point streak comes to an end after they get absolutely crushed by the New York Rangers. And everything that we thought was wrong with this team came to a head in this game, and we'll talk about it. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a podcast producer for the Daily J. It's called, well, it's called the Daily J at WWJ News Radio. Um, got a little backwards there, but we got there. Uh, Scotty is the host of Locked On Tigers as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And I'm going to be real, real with you guys. I don't really want to talk about this one. It was the same way I felt about the game against the Sabres. Um, Scotty, you said it best on yesterday's episode when we preview. It was one of those things where I texted you it, where they down 5-2. I texted you, and I was like, man, this is one of those games where you're disgusted by their play and also impressed by how well you know this team. Because you said it specifically on yesterday's crossover that when this team loses, they lose big. And they lost big again for the second time, third time, if you consider the Boston Bruins game a uh, blowout as well of the season and eight to eight to two loss to the New York Rangers. And in the game against the Sabres, I don't know if you recall me saying this, Scotty, but I said, you can only have one or two of these a year um, before you start asking serious questions. And that was what, what happened out there again tonight was absolutely unacceptable in front of a home crowd too. on after a day off unacceptable word. <laughs> I mean, that sucked. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to get on here and talk about that. That that was horrible. And yeah. like the frustrating part is, is that for what half the game, almost two periods, probably two periods. It was like a pretty back and forth, like close game. The shot total, the shot on net totals were low for both teams. You were like, okay, this is kind of a, a scrappy game that the wings are going to have to, really scratch and claw their way out of and like the Rangers just won't go away and whatnot. And then they got to the third period and just it, it, yeah. Train wreck disaster, fill in the blank. It was absolutely horrific. And um, yeah, I, I mean that, that, Oh, I heard it a little bit. You didn't quite, you didn't, I didn't quite get the mute the, button. I tried to conceal it. Oh, okay. I got you. Um, yeah, no, man, it, it, it was terrible. I, I don't know. Like well, I mean, we'll certainly talk about it. And like I said, for the first almost two periods, it was it was a lot closer of a game than it ended up being. But yeah, that that you can't just throw in the towel every time you get down two goals. Like you can't. Yeah, that, that's and that's what's happened so far this season. Every regulation loss has been a complete just annihilation, and that can't happen. No, and I mean it's it's it... There's so much to talk about with what this what went wrong with this game. I, I think the first thing to talk about is, I mean, they keep getting hurt on the bench. Yeah. I mean, they, they physically cannot keep guys healthy. We found out Soderblom was going to be day to day um, before the game, and that's why they called up Berger and Giovanni Smith. Giovanni Smith was the healthy scratch. They called up two guys because they're about to go on a West Coast road trip, so they want to fill their roster to the max that way in case – more players get injured. They have guys ready because Grand Rapids is a long way from California. Um, obviously, we were very excited to see Berger and get the call up and start playing. We said that as soon as injuries started happening, that would occur. We weren't sure how long, like if it would have to be a longer term injury for that to happen or not. Yeah. But here he is. He made his NHL debut. That was really cool. That's really cool to see. And he immediately got a point. And, you know, if you want to talk, I don't even want to talk positives in this game because there wasn't a whole lot. <laughs> But that good, that that fourth line of Bergeron, Valeno, and Zarnik was the only line that played well in this game. Yeah, only Bergeron line that consistently played, went out and played well. Yeah, Ber Bergeron. You know, I mean, he he played really well. He played super well. I, I if definitely, uh, I don't want to say beyond his years, but like definitely did not look like it he was looked, his first NHL game. Like definitely was not overtaken by the moment. He looked really really good. I honestly, I thought on both ends of the puck. And again, like that really ended up not doing anything 
doing us any good by the end of the game. The third period was a train wreck, but yeah, I thought he was definitely a bright spot. Let me get that first assist. The, uh, yeah, beauty. It really facilitated all by Valeno there. A beautiful break out by Valeno or break out of his own zone. Then it transitioned into a beautiful break in. And then he just using that speed to streak down the middle of the ice, receive that nice feed from Berger and finish the job. I mean, they were the only line out there that with, you know, more shots for than shots against at five on five and right. more shot attempts for than shot attempts against at five on five. That line played really well in this game, which is really sad when you have guys on this team who are way better than that line in terms of talent. And those are the only guys who showed up in this game. It's, it was absolutely embarrassing. Yeah. And it's it, again, they're not helped by the fact that these injuries keep happening and Bertuzzi can't come back soon enough. Jake Wolman can't come back soon enough. Cause I'm getting tired of trotting out Robert Haig and, Everybody can't come uh, back. Gustav <laughs> Lindstrom on the, that third defensive pair because it's been brutal. They have not looked good since early, early in the season. Uh, the last like ten or so games, it's been just like a cluster of how well you know what you're cluster. rolling the die of if they're going to play even okay or not. And there's a second word to that cluster. Um, <laughs> I can't say That's it. On here. I repeated it. It was funny. It was just funny hearing just the word cluster on its own. Yeah. 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 It rhymes with duck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who they'll be playing on the West Coast road trip. Anyway. There you go. Um, <laughs> just, I'm so, like, when they, they lost to the Sabres, I got, like, yelling mad. But, like, after this loss, I'm just, like, dis like disappointed dad mad is what I'm at, at right now. It's just, it was a very depressing game. The defense, man, I, I mean, the defense just, dude, where were they in this game? Where were you they? Know, they just. It, it was, it was remarkable because it wasn't like the Rangers ended this game with like 60 shots, right? Like it wasn't <laughs> like it was a bad defensive performance in the sense that the Rangers just, you know, we're, we're they only pestering and, and getting pucks on net the entire night and whatever. But the shots that this is like the prime example of like shots on net don't tell the whole story is this game because the shots that they did get were the most prime and high danger scoring opportunities I think I've ever seen a team consistently get one after another, after another, after another. And it was weird because like you look around, you're like, all right, I, I don't know. They have they have like 18 shots on net, and it's like toward the end of the second or whatever it ended up being. And I swear every single opportunity, however, was a legitimate high-danger scoring threat, and that mm -hmm. it was abysmal. Everyone, top to bottom, it, ev everyone. It was terrible. Missed assignments and puck watching. Absolutely puck watching, dude. This team oh, my goodness. This game. The, the amount of times I saw that puck in the corner and all five players on the ice were just staring at that puck in the corner and not watching for that guy in front. And it's the amount of times, too. And, like, Cider and Sherratt had another rough game as a pair. And I don't know if you maybe need to break up that pairing. But besides the game against Montreal, they have not, like, looked consistently good all season. And if that pair is going to continue to underperform expectations, then mix up who they're paired with. I don't. I mean, I know you don't want to mix up the Hronik and Model line because they're one of the better performing pairs this season, but like, you got to do something here because that pair Clearly. that's eating up the most amount of minutes is underperforming right now. And it sucks to say with cider, but I mean, maybe this is, I, I'm not going to say that, you know, the, the dreaded words that accompany a, a second season in the NHL, but he's not playing. He's not playing like cider. We saw last year. He's not. And I don't know if it's because he and Sherratt don't make a good pair. I don't know if it's just because the league caught, caught up with cider, but, you know, it goes with Sherratt, too. I mean, he's all over the place, but not really making plays happen when he does get over there. It's just yeah. defensively, the amount of times I saw both defensemen off to either side of the net while there was a blue shirt in the slot with no one covering, just wide open to bury the puck was or get a prime scoring chance. So the like, amount of rebounds that came out that they could not clear away from the front of the goalie. Preach. No, it, I mean, it was terrible. So... I will get to the ad because I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to rift and I don't want to have our first ad break at like 13 minutes. Fair. Got to talk to you guys today about bet online, bet is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. 
Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to e soccer, esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Uh, we're breaking down the, regrettably breaking down, the 8-2 lost to the New York Rangers that occurred last night. Brutal. And, Scotty, you're about to go on a uh, huge monologue, I have a feeling. Yeah, I don't, I, well, I don't know how huge of a monologue it is, but I just want to talk about goaltending because, well, certainly you let in eight, nobody's going to look at you and go, oh, oh you know, you weren't that no, bad. No, you're full, you know. But the, it cannot be stressed enough how brutal the defense was. The last, like, five goals given up was just abysmal defensively. Like, getting the puck right in front of the net over and over and over again. Like you said, no Red Wings players in front of the net to combat anything. Um, I mean, the you know, was it the last one, seventh or eighth goal? One of them was, you know, deflected by, by by a wing, like redirected by a Red Wing. Like, I mean, it was it was just he could not catch a break and he wasn't getting peppered. Like, he, he wasn't getting – Again, like 40, 50 shots on net or anything ridiculous. It was just every single shot he had to go up against was high danger. And so, yeah, it, it just, it's one of those games where it just sucked all around. And, and I, I don't know, I, people were talking a lot of stuff about Ned in, in the games that got away from us when he was in that. And now it's happened to Huso. And, like, is it going to be a same energy thing? Is it going to be uh, the defense hasn't been good really consistently for either of them, which is probably true? Um, I don't know, man. I mean, this I'm just really tired of every time we lose in regulation, it's just uncompetitive and by four and five and six. Like, I, I would like to, to – uh, well, I'd like to win. But, like, if we're I, – I would like to have not just these derailing – like completely momentum stopping, just you know, a if you're gonna if you're gonna continue to lose games by six goals on a semi consistent basis, you're gonna have the second half of last season when we were what four six <clears throat> game points and rather out of the postseason, and then we turned around and a month later we, <laughs> we we weren't even relatively close. And I know Boston had games on hand on us too, and that's that's a little bit different, but still like. You're just going to spiral and you, you can't, you can't like, you literally can't afford to just continuously lose by four plus in regulation every time you lose. You and can't. then at what point, like too, did like, what's the point of having fired Jeff Blaschel? Like that was one of the main reasons is that right. the wheels fell off and you started losing big games or not big games, but losing games by big amounts, losing games, big, right? Yeah. Losing <laughs> games, big. And so you know, what's the, you know, what's the difference if this is going to continue to happen? And obviously like we're coming off a hot streak. Red Wings won three in a row, lost in a shootout at a four game point streak. And then they come and drop an egg like this. And that, that egg is, it's just, it's like you said, Scotty is if this was like a two, one loss, we'd be talking differently. It'd be like, okay, well they fought hard and they kept it close. You know, no moral victories. This the expectations have shifted. You want to at least say, well, a because the game was game. so different for the first two periods and not yeah. that, well, well not re not really defensively, but <laughs> offensively, it, it was different in the sense that they were capitalizing on opportunities. But even really the entire game, like something that you pointed out, I think, in yesterday's show, this team cannot stay in the opponent's zone and have like a consistent possession where they're getting multiple shots all in the zone and the puck doesn't leave the opponent's zone for like, more Both than their goals. 20 seconds. Like it's like, it, it's, it's all the rush. It's all f like one man breaks or it's one, all special teams. Like there's the, no five on five consistent pressure at all. And that the, again, you cannot maintain that. And I know like this is, this is right after the game. And, and we've said it after the last couple, like if they go out and win the next three or four, then like, it's going to change tune. But, but we, we, 
at some point, we can't just keep saying, oh, well, if they do the same thing they did in the last blowout this time, it'll be okay again and they'll recover. Like, no, you, you can't keep doing this. Yeah, I mean, the, the first goal they scored from Joe Valeno was a beautiful play, but it was off the rush. The second yeah. goal was on a dump and chase that Igor Shesterkin misplayed. I mean, it, you got to, at some point, learn how to play five-on-five -five hockey and establish everything we talked about. And I, I, I felt bad saying it after I said it at the start of yesterday's episode because the Red Wings were playing well in that stretch. And here I come on this podcast, this crossover, and being like, well, I don't want to get, get away with my excitement and talk about like how much I love you know what they're doing because I can see the cracks. And I felt bad mentioning that the cracks are there, you know? And then right. they come out and they prove everything we both talked about, what was wrong with this team, right in this game. And that's just, that's a really crappy feeling. Like, I'm not happy about the fact that we were right about there being them being horrible at five on five. But I'm not happy about the fact. I'd rather be wrong and have a good sports team to root right. for for the first time I'd rather time be wrong and watch the team decade. be competitive. Yeah. And so, I mean, they're winning games, and I said it in yesterday's episode, but they win games off good goaltending and good special teams. And I know that the special teams for the power players ranked at And converting on the rush, right, yeah. which is all things yeah. that vary dramatically on a game-to-game -game basis and that it's very hard to be consistent yeah. in all of those areas for 82 games. Like, nearly you, impossible. So, it, it, it's far from, you know, like, again, this is one game, like, at the end of the day, and it's far from – from making any like change of direction or any presumptions about the remainder of the season, but you know, adjustments have to be made is the point. Like that, that's all that this, that this conversation is like pointing out that adjustments need to be made. Like that is a, that is a need. And um, hopefully they do because then, then this will change tune. But as it stands today on, on Friday, November 11th, it's a lot <laughs> A lot of adjustments still need to be made and a lot of things still need to get tightened up for this team, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the thing that just drives me nuts is, let's talk to about Lalone's culpability in this as well. Because we didn't really bring this up on the game where the Sabres blew out the Red Wings. But why is he not throwing a life preserver to his goaltenders after like the fifth or sixth goal? When you see the games getting out of hand, like does he not remember... That, and I'm not like trying to get on here and be like, you know, fire alone. But, you know, as a head coach, you don't just because you're a first year head coach and there's a honeymoon period, you know, the honeymoon period is going to run out really fast if you keep getting blown out like this. And you have culpability in the fact that you're not changing your goaltenders. Throw him a freaking life preserver, get him a, a, out of the net and get a different goalie in there to finish the game because you're going to ruin your goalie's confidence if you're going to keep him in there like that. Like, You've let both Nadelkovich and Huso play 60-minute games where they let up eight goals. That's unacceptable. You can't do that as a head coach. Also, as a Twitter user pointed out to me, why not call a timeout? Why not say, okay, we're down 4-2. We just gave up two goals in like a minute and a half. Now we're down 4-2, but there's still plenty of third period left. Let's call a timeout and regroup. Never did that either. At what point do we also hold – because it's not just in the players, and I understand injuries are a huge issue, but at what point do we hold our coaching staff culpable for these big losses as well? Because the team plays poorly, but they're also running the routes and running the schemes that the head coach gives them. Well, yeah, and and like the team's over 500. <laughs> like like it's, it's one game, but it's just that you can't. But this game, these games speak a lot. No, I agree. I, I completely agree. I, I, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. It, it's just, it's, uh, I am having a hard time wrapping my head around it because there's a lot of thoughts swirling right now. <laughs> right. Because they, they are winning games. Like they're winning hockey games, but when they lose, they get pumped. Like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I agree with everything you said. And, and I think that it is, It's very important to see how they rebound. Like, and I don't want to keep regurgitating that every time we lose by five, which has happened already way too often this season. But like that, I mean, that like, that's where we're at. I, I don't know. I don't know. I like, I, I don't know where else to, to go except like, well, you know, there, there's only one way to go and it's, it's up a little bit, hopefully. Well, I'm like, I, I don't want to. 
the Lalone thing is frustrating because like you got to be able to do those things and it gets your rookie head coach and like you got to trust the process. It's a new scheme and you're waiting for things that to, to like develop and the team to find its identity and stuff like that. So like while I'm very angry and upset and like I said, disappointed dad energy right now and how this team performed, you know, keep in mind the last time they got blown out like this, then they responded with a three Oh and one streak. A uh, three-game winning streak turned into a four-game point streak, and that was right. a great response. But then to follow that up with another, like, I don't want this to be the trend. I don't want four-game point streak to then be a huge blowout. I mean, I'm sure there are people who will be like, I'll take one blowout every five games if it means that <laughs> we get no, um, I mean, if you're seven of eight in the process. Between, sure, but I think the point is, like, I, I I'm not sure it's possible for over an 82-game season to consistently get – crushed destroyed and then bounce back and like just yeah. you know win the next three or four or whatever like i, I don't i don't think that's really viable and you know, like it's early november like I, I think i think it's uh that's a much different conversation as the season goes on you can't keep a full you can't afford to keep having these happen no and then like the reason why i'm so concerned after this loss after just like this one loss after they come off a point streak is because like i said a couple minutes ago these losses these big blowout losses speak way louder than a close to one loss does like the loss against the Montreal Canadians. You know, you saw a lot of good things in that game. You can take good things away. You can't take a lot of good things away from this game. In fact, when you see a loss like this and you see, this is the second time it's happened and they played very similarly in this game to then how they lost to the Buffalo Sabres who were hot at the time. You're going, this is a bigger issue and you see what they're doing well and how they're winning games and they're winning games off. Like what you said are inconsistencies and by inconsistencies, I mean, like, you're not always going to be able to score off the rush. That's not something you can, that's not something you can, like, jot you can down. You know, you, into you can't on a night into. Night basis, correct. That's something that just happens on the fly. You right. can't rely on your power play and penalty kill to win you every single game. John Chick said yesterday is that the power, Rangers made such a deep run because of their power play, but they lacked five on five skills, and that's what cost them. You know, the things that matter, the team isn't doing well. And the things that they are winning the games with are things you can't, do on a consistent basis. You can't plan out. And that's why I'm, that's why there is a level of worry that I have in this season, despite the fact that they're playing well, but this is also why I've made sure to keep my reality in check for this season. And while it's nice, the fact that they're playing, they're playing so well and off to a hot start, this, you know, game, um, save this game. You know, I do remember like this isn't a playoff team and I recognize this isn't a playoff team. The, they'll probably hopefully compete for a wild card team down the way. But with this, how competitive this division is, we are looking for this to be an improvement year, you know, getting into like the 85 point range. Is it a proven, but not a playoff team. And that's where I, my season prediction was at the beginning. And that's where it is now. And, you know, losses like this just reaffirm like, yeah, that's probably where this team's going to be at. Yeah. Word. When we come back, we'll talk about, the West Coast road trip, namely the first of the game, first of what the three or four game road trip that is going to be. Yeah. The, starting with the LA Kings on Saturday. We'll preview that one for you guys when we come back. Locked on Red Wings. Segment three, locked on Red Wings. Uh, we are going to move on away from that game that totally didn't happen last night and uh, talk about the Los Angeles Kings. Last time you, uh, these two teams came out, the Red Wings lost in overtime five to four off the back of Dylan Larkin stealing a point on an amazing hustle play, Sunquist scoring the game-tying goal. So uh, you're going on the West Coast. Um, this is your first real road trip of the year, Scotty, because most of their road games have been followed, preceded by, and then su succeeded by a home game. Right. Uh, immediately following. So this is your first real road trip, and going out West is tough. And you're going to start it off with the best team on that West Coast road trip in the LA Kings. And currently, the LA Kings are third in the Pacific Division. They are eight, six, and one. They've come down to earth a little bit um, from their hot start, but they're still a very good hockey team. They got guys like Gabe Villardi, Kevin Filar, Anze Kopitar, and Trevor Moore all playing very well this season with 15 points, 14 points, 13 points, and 10 points, respectively. But their big weakness right now is in their goaltending with both of their goaltenders having a sub 900 save percentage and uh, Jonathan Wick having an 896 and Calvin Peterson having an 872. Is this a game at the Staples Center you think Scotty could be a bounce back game for the Red Wings? I mean, yeah, like 
that that's I think that adds to the frustration with this team is like in the second half of last season, you were just like, all right, every game is gonna be this six, is seven, eight goals against. <laughs> and like it's frustrating because this team, A, has expectations somewhat for the first time in a while, but B, you see on the nights they don't lose by six, you see them put together, you know, like we talked about um in the not obviously tonight, but the last Rangers game, like one of the better defensive performances of the season, like they show flashes and they lack consistency. And I think that's the overall point of the entire first two segments is like we we are trying to when you want to take that next step, that next step involves being consistent uh, over a full season. And so, yeah, I think that really any game is is a viable bounce back and like we stole a point for sure absolutely stole a point from them last time but still like even even if they had dropped it that's still a one goal loss to a playoff team and it was a really competitive hockey game for the most part um so yeah i I think that like it absolutely could and like you have a team that struggles with they struggling in net and the Wings are a team that can kind of score without having a ton of shots on net. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, absolutely. But inconsistency. So, like, who knows? <laughs> well, I mean, like, thankfully, the Kings' weaknesses play into your strengths in that their power right. play is ranked 25th in the league and their penalty kill is ranked 27th in the league. Um, so, you know, I think actually I might be wrong and I think it might be 22nd is where they're at 21st in the league is their penalty kill. Um, so, I mean, granted your power play didn't convert tonight. It looked horrible. It looked bad in the game against the, um, Montreal Canadians when you had like seven power plays, obviously before that, it looked pretty solid middle of the league teams may have just figured out your power play. Cause it wasn't anything like new and inventive. You just passed the puck a lot and you passed it really well. And now teams are figuring out that you pass that puck between two or three guys. They're going to block those passing lanes. So, I mean, right. you could just be figured out. The power play might not be a strength until they're able to reinvigorate it for a little bit while. And then the penalty like, score, got scored on. So, I don't even know if I can call these strengths and weaknesses anymore, <laughs> Scotty. I'm so down bad after that loss to the Rangers. Well, but- no, again, like, the reason why is because it is it is inconsistent. Everything yeah. is inconsistent. It'll be good for three or four games, and it'll be terrible for three or four games. And, like, we, we saw a brutal stretch. What was that, two, three weeks ago now? We saw a brutal stretch where they lost several in a row and were getting kind of blown off the ice in almost every game. And then we saw uh, two we've had this season, like really good stretches, the one to start the year and then the one before, right that ended tonight. Like, there, I don't know. Like, it's, it's, it's frustrating because of the inconsistencies. And you're right. Like, it's hard pinpointing strengths and weaknesses when some nights your strengths are your weaknesses and some nights your weaknesses are your strengths randomly. So yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be tough, man. It's just really tough for me to preview this game in particular because the, you know, the Kings are a good team. I don't know, man. I I'm very down bad as they would say right now, as the kids would say, I'm down bad. Um, So it's hard for me to like, feel good about this game coming up on Saturday, especially a West coast game where they're going to be jet lagged. It's, it's, it's going to be, you know, well, I'd like to think that they're going to be pissed off and they respond, but they're, they're so beat up depth wise. And we, that was one of the things that we were complimenting is that, yeah. you know, their depth has come up big and obviously they scored a goal in this game against the Rangers, but that depth is thinning, you know, injury after injury, after injury, like that depth was going strong when there was like two or three guys injured, but now you're up to like six or seven. And now you're calling well, up Giovanni your, Smith. Your depth players are now getting injured. <laughs> no, exactly. You have Luff, Zarnik, Giovanni Smith, and Jonathan Bergren all up at the NHL level right now. Obviously, Luff broke his wrist or whatever, had surgery on it, is out eight to ten weeks on the IR. But all those guys are at the NHL level right now. Wh- who else do we have left? Like, now our depth is back yeah. to where it was last season. Like, who are you going to call up next? Taro Hirose? Are you going to call up... Um, Chase Pearson, like no shots at those guys, but those guys aren't NHL players. We've seen that time and time again, but we had to call them up last year because there was no depth and injuries happened. We've had so many injuries, and I'm not using that as an excuse as to why this team played so poorly against the Rangers. I guess I'm going back. I guess I had more left into the tank about the Rangers game, but we have, I'm not using it as an excuse, but we have been so banged up that it doesn't help. 
I mean, you had Lucas Raymond score in this game. He's stayed hot. He's now got six points in seven games after starting the game season with two points in seven games. He's completely turned his scoring on off a great feed from Dylan Larkin, who's remained hot. I mean, if you had Tyler Bertuzzi and you had Jacob Vrana, I'm not saying all the problems would magically disappear, but I'm saying that it'd be markably better. I mean, our depth is just so hit right now. And it's, I a credit to the depth for playing as well as it has and getting the Red Wings through this tough stretch for as long as they have. But now our depth depth is getting hurt. And it just, right. it's hard for me after a right. big loss, knowing this team is still beat up. And I know Bertuzzi is going to be back any day to think about this game against the Los Angeles Kings and go, bounce back game, baby. Let's go. It's just, man, it's going to be tough. And, you know, if they bounce back and they play well and they win, that's just a testament to their commitment to Derek Lalonde's system and how and Derek Lalonde for get motivating that team to bounce back. And that's a testament to that. Well, but that's if they bounce back. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, it's a the the Kings game is a huge game because if you win the Kings game, you can start a stretch because then you get the Ducks, who you've already crushed, killed him yeah. once, right? Like if it if you kick off the road trip. With a win against the Kings, you could push yourself back into another hot stretch and get another, you know, four points in two games or three points in two games and and start another hot stretch, which is obviously what you need after these kind of losses. But it's just really frustrating when every loss just like sucks everything out of you. Like that's it's it's really demoralizing. Yeah, that's super demoralizing. And I mean. I, I got to imagine Nadalkovic is going to start this one, give Huso the day off to get his head right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think we're at a point yet with our goaltending where you go back to Huso after a game like this just because he's your starter. I mean, you said it yesterday. It's a 1A, 1B situation where you kind of ride the hot hand and risk. Huso the got Sharks killed. after that too. Yeah, like you could so. sweep the West Coast if you win in LA. It's, it's literally Kings, Ducks, Sharks, and then – you come back to Columbus. Like you could start a, a legitimate, I mean, after the Kings, you play three of the worst teams in hockey, like, <laughs> like straight up, like you, yeah. you could absolutely, if you take care of business against the Kings and start off strong, you could really carry that momentum and, and find yourself back at another win streak. So in, important to start the road trip off. Right. I think over under six, well, we both took the under in this last game, and we got Rangers yeah. themselves. And I said, I was like, oh, we all took the under, so naturally the over will hit, yeah. which I'm still wrong about, obviously, but just funny because that's how it always ends up working. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the under in this game against the the Kings. You're going to talk all of that about getting blown out and how you're not feeling good about it, and I take the under? Well, because I don't think they'll get blown out in two straight games. If they get blown out in two straight games, we're going to have to have a real, real conversation <laughs> on Monday. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I'll take the over. Safe play. I just take the under because the Red Wings scoring hasn't been there. They haven't scored more than three goals since the Ducks yeah. game. Or maybe did they Jeez. score three against the Sabres, they, but they haven't scored more than three goals. Right, more than game, three. Which is I'm trying to think, yeah. That's two, tough. Two weeks ago now. It's tough. Yeah, that's real tough. Um, yeah, we'll uh, be back on Monday, guys. Hoping, hoping for a win. Uh, we need we need to be cheered up after that uh, demoralizing loss, the New York Rangers. So we'll be back then. Same time, same place. Right online. It's your team every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs>